So, uh, so our exam is Tuesday. I you are going to get it's five pages, and each page should take at most half an hour. So kind of keep that in mind. Um, really, it, it should take like 20 minutes per page. So if you get stuck on a problem, take a deep breath and just move on. It's one problem and then come back and finish it or give it your best go or come on Zoom. I'll be here. Um, and it's the States of Matter. And so I have, if you want, you can dress up as your State of Matter. So I have my gas, I have my gnome shirt on. And then I have my, let's put my squid hat on for liquids. Um, all right, there we go. So we're going to start with IMS. Sorry. Go ahead. So just one quick question. It's on this study set, is it 6789? Uh, five. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. So study sets, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I would actually recommend the worksheets also. I have to pause for, um, and then also, thank you for asking that major actually. Um, and also lab, uh, so the lab on solids, I, you know, in all honesty, if you go back and do the study set, you should be okay. Uh, quick comment with solids. I, I did not go into, I would tell you solids part A, if you need more practice, um, I didn't do like where there's two different elements, the ionic solids. Um, so you can say, oh, what a nice teacher. She's so nice to us. I'm being nice to myself because it's really hard for me to help people in this environment and to grade stuff. Um, but the comment I want to make about the lab with solids, about half of you had actually come and got help on it and you got a perfect uh, or you submitted it early and got feedback and resubmitted, and and then a number of you got either fives or tens on it. I would I would recommend looking at my comments and trying to fix it. You have until Tuesday to resubmit. You will lose points, um, but you can try. Um, you do have the lab on gas laws due this weekend. So hopefully you're doing your seven day challenge. Um, or if you get it in by Tuesday, if you want to do the, again, if you want to do the practice problems on the last page, um, you can always send me an email and see if you got them. But um, make sure you're doing that and have fun with it. All right. Um, yeah. So I think it, I don't even know what the due date shows on. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to mention with that is there is chances for extra credit. Uh, this actually may be your, one of your last chances for extra credit. There's like a lot of extra credit points you can get. So there was the solid geometry. Um, that was in the last week folder and I extended it until next week. So if you want to do that, tomorrow's going to be a rainy day. So a good day to get a bag of marshmallows or when you're studying and just need a break. Um, there is in the week seven folder, there's an extra credit. Uh, which is another thing. It's kind of a playful thing. So kind of see that. Um, and so that's that you can do. There was one with before the solids lab. Um, so it was when you guys had to do some kind of cooking in your kitchen. So I can't remember now all of this, but um, yeah, anyway, you could have watched. There was a video you could have watched. Oh, you did the IMF lab. That's what it was. Uh, and so in the IMF lab, um, there was extra credit, which was, there was like a list. I just know it's because I just posted it for my other class. So if you want to watch one of those videos, um, you can do that. So there were, and also if you were going to do like a 30, if, if you want with the gas law lab, there were several seven day challenges. And if you decide that you want to try and go for 30 days, just put a note in the lab and say, I'm going to go for the 30 day challenge because that will take us till the end of the term. Um, but if you're going to do that, it's something you're committing to now. So kind of keep that in mind. 
uh, in the 10th week, you can't be like desperate saying, oh my gosh, what do I do? You want to be doing it now. Um, Cause that's going to be June and the weather will be even nicer than it's going to be. Um, take advantage of our rainy day tomorrow. Cause it just gets really nice after that. Um, yeah. And we're, we're, we're past the halfway point. So just do it. Um, you guys should be able to do really good on this, this exam. I know where we're going. Um, and so I'm not going to pussyfoot and say everything's going to be fine. I know where we're going. You want to do really good on this exam. You want to do extra credit because um, we're getting into nice weather and we're getting into the hardest stuff this term. This term really gets harder as it goes along. So what we do for the next exam, um, people are here and just do everything in the work. They end up doing great. So just make the commitment to always be here, do what's due. Uh, if you have any late assignments, just get them in um, and you'll be fine. All right, because the test is a small piece of it. All the other points add up and have fun with the lab. Do the extra credit. Damon can tell you the extra credit was fun. It's really goofy, um, but it's really fun. I don't know. I've done it many times, um, especially if you get a disaster or whatever it's called, disaster isomer. Disaster hedron. Oh, that's what it was, disaster hedron. Thank you. Um, all right, so IMFs, you guys did great with this. Um, you know, there was another comment that came up during our my office hours today that this worksheet was really hard today. It, it is harder. It's there to make sure that for the midterm you're studied because the hard, if I give you the harder ones on the worksheet, um, but also we're into the math and and that's what we're doing next week after the midterm, it's, it's math. Uh, which does take more time in solving and stuff. So just have your thinking caps on. Put your knoth. Um, name my mole. I have a couple more names over there now. So you have until next Tuesday. Until actually, yeah, the new moon is Tuesday. The moles have made it to my tomatoes, but they're not eating the tomatoes. I hope not. Uh, my dog does that for me. So these are both nonpolar. If you have two of the same thing, it's nonpolar. And so that is called London. If they're both London, uh, they're also called induced dipole. So if they're both London, what do we look at for stronger IMF? Larger surface area. Yes. Is that Maddie? Yeah. Okay. So chlorine, because it's a larger surface area. Um, on the next one, this is the NOS. If you see an NH, OH, or FH, that's a high hydrogen bond. You really, back to what Major asked me, especially these first five, six, and seven, you got to go back and redo them because they had really good practice and the worksheets. Um, the gas laws, we just like really immersed ourselves this week. So you're going to be, you're going to be okay. You can go back and practice some, but it's PV equals NRT. Uh, this is, there's a pooling of the phosphorus. So it is a dipole dipole, or we just say dipole. Each bond wins. So remember our hierarchy. Um, there is one other choice, which is the um, ionic but that is not showing up on any of these, so we won't worry about it. All right, this one, we have the oxygen in the middle, so it's a dipole. Reminder how these are written, that the hydrogens are on the carbon. So the oxygen's pooling. It's not an H bond. This is nonpolar. And anybody, so the dipole wins. That's the higher one. You guys did really great with this. Just go back and review it. How do we know that one is? Uh, non-polar, or is, yeah, London, <coughs> the one that's C3H8. <coughs> so I'm stuck in my throat. I actually kind of said the answer. It's only carbon and hydrogen. <coughs> so only carbon and hydrogen is non-polar. A question that's not showing up on here 
but I know it's on the exam because you guys have an advantage this time because I actually wrote the whole exam and took it before today because Tristan had to take it early. Uh, there is a question on there because to me it's the most important one. To me, it's the most important question of the term. Uh, which of these in this question number one are hydrophobic? So, anybody? The non-polar ones. So anything that's non-polar. Yeah. So the chlorine and fluorine are non-polar and the C3H8 is non-polar. So my greens were the stronger IMF, but the purples are the hydrophobic. So things that have no pooling, they don't mix with water. We get, that's also what we do after this midterm. So it's not just math, but we look at solubility in water quite a bit. Um, all right, so number two, these, some of these are straight from previous midterms. I just cut and pasted in here. Uh, and so it, it, we're gonna actually, we'll, we'll pick the answer for this, um, but I wanna make sure these also are definitions of the other properties. So a liquid's resistance to flow, which is- Viscosity. That is viscosity. Or I think an easier way of thinking of it is how sticky it is. So molasses, honey, real honey. Don't use the other crappy stuff. Um, actually, I'm going to segue for a second because I, I have this here for you. My other class, they all do the 30 days of some kind of healthy change. Um, and so this was a student actually wrote a poem for me. And it's, it's really funny. But this was she works at a hospital. She's a nurse. And this was what her drawer was like before, because we all get in that. I've been like that last term was like that for me. And I gained eight pounds last term. And I'm not a big person. I'm really small. I'm like two feet tall. And so eight pounds was a lot of weight. Um, and, and that my other class inspired me. I'm sorry, you guys <laughs> inspire me because you guys don't ever make the healthy changes for some reason. You guys inspire me. Um, but anyway, this was her drawer, uh, which was you just go and you start eating chocolate. Um, I didn't eat Snickers and stuff. I ate like the really good high, high thing chocolate. And just we, it, the class is biochem and this is what her life is like now. And she has four kids. And so they're all eating fruit and stuff. And um, anyway, I just thought that was really inspirational. So if you want to do a 30 day challenge, there's some on the lab um, where there's other ones possible. You can send me an email. All right. So Sorry, I just saw that under my notes. Uh, so viscosity, uh, so I, I actually, so they inspired me. I've been doing the intermittent fasting. I've lost like five to eight pounds in the past month. And I'm so happy. I feel like a fairy again. I can float and fly when I do my meditation. That's, that's probably why I attracted the gnomes. Um, all right, ease of evaporation. Anybody, what property is that? You can get, if your name's on the board, you can get bonus if you speak up. Or you can get the Damon and Major speak up and Christian. Is it so, uh, the ease of evaporation, that is volatility. So something that is volatile is going to evaporate pretty easily. All right. Uh, the temperature at which you liquid evaporates. What property is that? It's talking about boiling temperature. Point. It is BP, it is boiling point, not blood pressure. Um, and then uh, D was our answer for vapor pressure. That is vapor pressure because we're talking about collisions. So I had mentioned when I went through it, uh, given the definition, I said we get pretty familiar with pressure when we get into gas laws, so you should feel more comfortable. And then the last one, so D was our answer for this one, but uh, the last one, the amount of heat required. So heat was uh, the enthalpy delta H of VAP, which is also called the enthalpy um, of vaporization. I mentioned that because sometimes I write the word out 
and we talked about enthalpy last term. We talk about enthalpy this summer again. Um, and so it's good to remind us enthalpy means heat and the symbol is delta H. All right, uh, what ones evaporate fast? And that would be something that is nonpolar. Uh, and the reason would be because it has weak IMFs. Water does not evaporate fast. That's why we have puddles all over the place. It's a good thing. All right. If so, it has high volatility. Uh, so that means high volatility means weak IMFs. Right, so the ones that are volatile have a, a weak IMF. So what else is going to be high? Well, viscosity is not because it's not going to be sticking together because it doesn't, it's not attracted. Density, that, that has nothing to do with this. If it has high volatility, it's going to tend to be a gas. So definitely not density. Surface tension um, actually was the one that didn't show up here. I was trying to remember what it was, but surface tension, that's what the extra credit, that one extra credit is. It's doing drops on a penny. Um, I think it's in the week seven folder, which that folder is there, it's open. Even the week seven lab is there if you wanna just do it. And so next weekend you have the whole weekend off. Uh, so surface tension, nope. Uh, heat of vaporization, nope, it is the vapor pressure. So weak IMFs will give you high volatility, high vapor pressure. So these are going to be the ones that a lot of it's escaping, right? It escapes the liquid IMF. So liquids have high IMF. All right, then number five, another um, some of these actually used to be on your study set, and I think I moved them to this. So this has a vapor pressure of 400 at 150. This has the same vapor pressure, but at 57. So the PBR3, you need a higher temperature to evaporate. So the vapor pressure is just telling you how much has escaped to evaporate or escape, which means the PBR3 has a higher IMF. That you want to figure out because once you know the one with the higher IMF, we can do the rest of it. So evaporate slower, that would be the higher IMF. So it's it's attracted, right? It has a high IMF. It doesn't want to escape. Uh, lower boiling point will be the weaker IMF. So it's going to escape. So that would be the other one, the PI3. And then the weaker IMFs is the PI3. Questions with that one? This is actually good practice. I'm complimenting myself. So nice. Um, you're going to have this question on there. So you have one water molecule and one CH3. To do an H bond, to do any of these, you have to have two molecules. They could be two of the same. Uh, so water is H2O. So hopefully you know how to draw that. You don't have to draw the dots, but the key is the oxygen has the negative. The hydrogen has the positive. Um, so remember doing these, that we have a negative area and a positive area. It's not a charge, but it's an area of positivity and negativity. So for me to do this correctly, I'm going to have to make the nitrogen and hydrogen because that's where the attraction is. So this is saying we have a carbon with three hydrogens. I was not being thoughtful here as I was talking. So this is a carbon with the three hydrogens, and then there's nitrogen. So remember, so there are not per se questions. I'm not testing you on stuff from the previous exam, previous celebration. But if you don't know how to do Lewis structures and draw them, 
um, the idea, then these problems, right, all the IMF stuff kind of requires that we remember some of that. The carbon and hydrogen part, there's no pooling, but the nitrogen has a negative area and the hydrogen has a positive area. So what the H bond is going to be is um, the oxygen is going to have an attraction for the hydrogen that's attached to the nitrogen. It's not gonna be attracted to these hydrogens. That's why I had to flip my molecule because there's no pooling over here. You could have also done, I just drew this funky, that this hydrogen here, just pick one way to draw it, uh, would attract to the nitrogen. So hydrogen bonds are not between the hydrogens. They're between N, O, or F, and those will have an attraction to the hydrogen that's attached to an N, O, or F. So from a negative to a positive. A uh, reminder, it's an attraction, so you can still jiggle it apart. It becomes a big deal in biochemistry because it's how proteins hold themselves together. That was a point of the cheese curd lab that you guys did. Oh, that was, seems like 10 years ago, and that was only like two or three weeks ago, wasn't it? Um, all right, questions with that. You will definitely be drawing an H bond because that's one of the big points. Um, and then we keep, we get into solubility next. And so we keep building on this. All right, so, Ice is a solid, water is a liquid, steam is a gas. So uh, solid or ice, you're gonna, you can get through this. This is one of the big points. Uh, liquid, so that's the water. They're all H2O. So, and then gas, we've talked about gas. So I'll draw my steam or gas over here. So when we talk about gas, what's the big points about a gas that makes them unique? They're chaotic. They are movement, so high kinetic energy, so chaos. And the other thing about them, the reason that they are chaos is that they have weak IMFs. So I want us to mention the IMFs here. So these guys have weak IMFs. And so there is, um, that kind of all goes together. So there is a lot of space. They take up space. which means they have a low density. So they're just all over the place. That's where you can draw your cat. Anyway, they're spread out. They spread out. A liquid, what's our keyword for a liquid? What do liquids do that they, they have IMFs, right? We're going to have IMFs become substantial in solids and liquids. But what do liquids do? Remember the word flow? Oh. They flow. Oh. They move. They're not chaotically moving, but they do flow past each other. It's why you can walk through water because the molecules flow and you fill the water. When you're walking through water, you fill it around you because um, they're all close together. So the molecules are close together though. So we're gonna have a density. So as you're walking through air, we don't fill the molecules because there's so much space. Uh, water is special because of that shape. And so in water, the liquid, the the bond angle, the bent allows it to pack. So to pack close together. So this ends up being the densest. That is something that's unique about water because of that bent shape. Um, and then a solid is a regular pattern. And there are some jiggles and wiggles, but they're really mellow, kind of like being a Zen that there's always jiggles and wiggles. But um, yeah, there's 
minimal movement. And so in the case of water, because of this angle, we get the beehive um, formation happening, the hexagons. And so most solids are going to pack really close together. Um, that's like the solids we talked about. And so they're going to be really dense. Uh, but there is a pattern to solids and there's little movement. I don't want to say no movement because there's always movement. Um, all right, questions on that first page. All right. So this page has some math on it. Um, this one, I'll give you, uh, I'm going to pause in a few moments. Uh, this is finding the FCC. So, and then there is also some math down here. So, um, but on number eight, just to get you started, this is where we have a whole bunch of numbers. This is where, remember the heating curve? And we do the stepwise, so there's a flat line, and there's another step, and then another flat line. And so our lower flat line is the melting point, and the higher flat line is our boiling point. So for this one, it tells us our boiling point is 65 degrees Celsius. Our melting point is negative 98 degrees Celsius. Anybody remember what the two flat lines were? Um, mm. for, sure. You can go. Thank you. Go ahead, Maddie. Um, one of them is the H of fusion, and the other one's the, or the enthalpy of fusion, and the other one's the enthalpy of vapor or vaporation. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. And then these are your solid liquid and gas. Um, so the y-axis is your temperature and the x-axis is your heat. So that's the delta H of fusion, delta H of, of VAP are flat lines because at this point there's no change in temperature. Uh, as a solid liquid and gas they do change in temperature. And all right. Um, so when the other keys, we, we kind of draw it out. You can fill in your other numbers. We can figure out what we need. I, I didn't give you all the numbers. I only gave you uh, the heat of fusion, right, which is 3.14 kilojoules per mole. And the heat of VAP is 37.6 kilojoules per mole. This is a question that was on your worksheet. Um, why is the vaporization one like 10 times more? It's so much larger. Does anybody remember? Requires more energy or more why, heat? Yeah, why yeah. does it require more heat? Uh, overcome the IMFs in liquid. Yeah, so that was from the previous question. That is what is why gases are chaos, because they don't have the IMFs. Uh, liquids have IMFs. It's it's just the order I went in. I started with the IMFs, and we talked about solids, and we finally jumped to gases. Because um, as tedious as it is to do the math on gases, it is just PV equals NRT. So here, this is a big number because we're having to get rid of all the connections. We have to really get them giggling and jiggling. So we need a lot of heat to get it to evaporate. All right. Um, and then I gave you the C for the liquid. So the liquid, just this part is the 2.345 joules per gram degree Celsius. I mean, using different colors can be helpful. Um, you don't have to put all the numbers in the graph like that. I'm just doing it kind of to help us all to see that. All right, uh, the density is there too. I guess we're gonna need that at some point. 
Um, and it's methanol, which I gave you the formula for methanol is CH3OH. So you can use your periodic table. So what steps are we going to have to use? Well, I didn't give you anything about the solid and gas. So negative 18 is we're somewhere up here. So at negative 18 Celsius, we're starting here. And it wants us to go. To vaporize it. So we're only doing two steps. We're just going from here to here. We're just going to do the liquid step and the delta H evap step. So we're completely evaporating it. Once you get to this point, it's evaporated. Um, so yeah, you have 222 milliliters both times. And you'll you want to get to kilojoules and you add them up. And hopefully we get that. Um, I'm going to pause so you can try it. You can take like a five, 10 minute break, or you can try some of the math problems on here or the other ones. So I'm going to go get a drink of water. A standing desk, I've decided. Um, that would be awesome. All right. You can also ponder your affirmation. I've had them behind me, but my mouth is covering up for your solid, liquid, or gas to start your, that's the most important part of your midterm of your celebration is that affirmations to start it. So something positive related to either the earth, the water. I'm hoping, I can't wait to get the artwork to come in or the music. Tristan told me he wrote a song and so he's gonna record it. I know Damon's gonna do something musical. Um, it's like my favorite part. Last last year it was this time and I had lost. I was like losing it because this is like when we were still in isolation and, and there was like no like none of us really knew what was going on. None of us imagined we'd still be here now. Um, and people just started sending me links and they were like recording these songs. There's one girl who played. I'm, I'm like recording, but uh, the ukulele. And and she dressed up. Um, and her grandma taught her to play the ukulele, and so she'd always dress up in these hats, you know, the the lady hats. And she played the ukulele and sang the song about the moon, and it was just like, I don't know, it was like so amazing. Somebody played somewhere over the rainbow on their trumpet. It was pretty amazing too. All right, let's do this so you can all go uh, or finish your worksheet and then see the sunset. So 222 milliliters, we have to get to grams. So that's why density is there. You guys remember density way back? Tinkerbell taught you density, speaking of gas or air. Uh, yeah, you know, and if you dress up with a silly knoff, you go to Goodwill and buy a knoff for your test, then you won't take yourself so seriously and you might giggle and jiggle because it's, it's really, You'll remember dressing up more than you'll remember anything about the test. All right. Uh, this guy is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 32 ish. Is that right? Yeah. Grams per mole. Um, so that was just, I'm assuming I did my math right. Uh, and then for the lip, oh, I didn't need to do that here. I'm sorry. Uh, we're in the liquid. So please ignore me. This is where we do the 2.345 joules over gram degree Celsius. Hopefully you'd already done it. So you read a scribble. You can moan. I can't hear you because you're all muted. Jeez, she made another mistake. How did she get a job? All right. So that cancels the grams, the milliliters. We have to cancel the temperature. Um, just a reminder, this has to be the change in temperature. So it's a change from negative 18 to positive 65. So that's going to be 83 degrees Celsius. Uh, and then I go to kilojoules. So one kilojoule over 1,000 joules would be our last step there. For this one, and we go to grams, um, you know, factory label is just nice because it keeps it all in a row. I don't know why I'm scrunching it over here really tiny. I'm really missing when I have three blackboards where I can write as big as I want, and I'm not limited by the end of a page. Um, 
And then this is where we do one mole over 32 grams. And then we're doing the heat of vaporization. We didn't need the heat of fusion at all. That was extra information. Uh, 37.6 kilojoules per mole. And then you add the two together and you should get my answer. Questions with that? That's just a reminder. You had one of these on the worksheet and on the study set. Um, there's one on the exam. So just label your steps. Sometimes this was a couple comments that had been asked to me. Sometimes it's two steps. Sometimes it's three steps. I'm not going to make you do five steps. That would be insane. Um, but do label what your steps are so that we start here in the liquid and we're going to delta H and VAP and just get to kilojoules. All right, number nine. This is so um, A is in the corners. So the way we do the math, there's going to be one A because the corners are one position. This is coming from an eighth of an atom times eight corners. Remember doing this. Um, so this is the biggest thing here is labeling. That says corners. All right. Uh, B is in the face positions. So B has a negative one and it's on the face. So you guys have a huge I I would condense your notes or have your notes in nice order, but like maybe make an, a page of some of the keynotes um, or just have it nicely organized times six faces. So it's a regular dice, not like those of you that play Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know, there's so many different dice there. So there's gonna be three Bs. Uh, and then, I can't find my other pens. Um, the C is on the edge. So the edge positions are a quarter of an atom because an edge of a cube would be part of four different cubes. And how many edges are there? Twelve. Twelve, yeah, four on top, four on the bottom. And you, you can just have this all in your notes, but it's nice to actually use your brain cells rather than going through and just writing everything. So a quarter times 12 would give us three. So our answer is going to be... Uh, a, B3, C3, kind of funny. Um, that would be what the unit cell formula would be. We're going to take one more step, which is we're going to figure out what A had a question mark. So we're going to go ahead and figure it out. Um, so C is a plus two times three of them. So that's plus six. B was a negative one times three of them. So that's a negative three. So what must A be? Oh, the wind came back. I thought like a wind thing that spins right outside my window here, so I can be amused. Um, so A must be a negative three. It's written all wrong because the positive should be first, but that's okay. All right, on uh, number 10, um, you know, the study set or the notes, we did practice on these, so uh, you should be okay with that. And again, on the lab, um, mostly did pretty good. You just, uh, if you didn't get as good a score as you want, look at the questions or you can stay after today and ask me. So BCC, uh, the things with BCC, there's two atoms per unit cell. And we're going to use the square root of three times A equals four radiuses. Um, yeah. And so it's going to be clearly showing your, your pieces. Uh, we know it's iron. So we're going to start with that piece of information, which means the periodic table. So iron is right here, 55.85. grams per mole. So this is going to be our first step. 
uh, Avogadro's number, right? So one mole over Avogadro's number of atoms. And again, I, I was gentle to you all um, that it is not going to be the like cesium chloride or the sodium chloride. So when you're studying or doing practice, uh, just focus that you get the idea of these. Um, there are with one like iron or silver for atoms per BCC. And then we can actually take it one more step, which is we can take our cubic centimeters to so the 7.874, and that will give us cubic centimeters. So you can punch that in. Um, and number two, we would take this number. It would be cubic two atoms in the. Oh, um, I'm sorry, two. Thank you. Right. Yeah. Thank you, Maddie. You're welcome. It's so it's wonderful hearing your voice say, "Yeah." See, you should have all done that. I had a teacher who'd say, "If you caught my mistakes, I'd throw you a piece of candy." So I can't do that. But um, all right. Um. So we would take this to the one third power. That will give us A. This is going to be A in centimeters. At this point, I go to, I didn't specify what unit you wanted. And then step three is the square root of three. I at least got, I got it right here and then I messed it up there. That's great. Um, and you know, when you make mistakes like that, you would lose a point. It's like a five point question. You'll lose a point because you clearly showed all your steps. Uh, and we would solve. So A would plug in there as long as everything's clearly laid out. And so if if you were in centimeters, it apparently comes out 1.26 E to negative 8 centimeters, uh, which is 126 picometers. There is something that came up in an office hour with Major. He was like all of his answers were always off for mine. And it, he reminded me this is an issue. So I wanted to mention this because there's probably somebody else in the class. Uh, if because of this digit, some of your calculators will show 0, 0.000000 and then they'll just show the one. And they won't show the digits after it because of how our calculators can show so many. So you have to put your calculator in scientific notation so you can see all the digits. Um, and it should have had four sig figs, but I don't know what the next sig figs is. So I did want to remind you, like I would lose that dreaded half point um, because I have my sig figs wrong. But with gas laws um, and like even up here, we're trying to respect sig figs. But if in doubt, let's go with three. Questions from this page. All right, we're in the home stretch. Um, gases, I mentioned, they don't like pressure, but they love high temperature. It's choice C. So anybody know what's going on here? Why? Does they explain? So they like high kinetic energy uh, jiggles, which means there's more chaos. So the higher the kinetic energy, that means that they're overcoming uh, any intermolecular forces. So there's weaker and weaker attractions happening. So the more jiggles and stuff they have, why low pressure? I mean, it's kind of the same thing. They they want fewer collisions. They really don't like each other. <laughs> um, they don't want to collide. They they like their personal space. They like their six foot or eight foot personal space, um, which is fascinating because they've actually come out with that it doesn't need to be six feet and that this whole cleaning of all the surfaces doesn't actually do anything. But yeah, everybody's still doing that. Um, All right, so fewer collisions, 
uh, so they can take up space. Gases love to take up space. They want their own space. They just don't want anything else in their space. All right, number 11. So we're trying to decrease the temperature. So we can look at PV equals NRT. Um, we'll also go through why for each one of these, high pressure won't work because a high pressure means more collisions um, and that would be higher kinetic energy. So higher kinetic energy, they're colliding more, so A is wrong. Uh, lower density, that is also wrong. Um, So a lower density, one of the ways to think of it is either there's less particles or more space. Yeah, it would be high density. I'm trying to think. I didn't explain that right. Um, for density, you can also think of it as PM equals DRT. If they're on the same side, if one goes down, the other is going up. Um, so fewer collisions would be happening if, I guess, decreased density would mean less molecules. That's not making sense. It's not collisions, sorry. If, if they're moving slower, um, so this one's, and they're still having the same collisions, they must have a higher density. Uh, decreased molecules, so again, these guys should have an opposite effect, so it's not going to work. Uh, so the one that works is an increased volume. So high, more space is due to more kinetic energy. It didn't ask you to explain, but I guess I was attempting to. These three didn't work because it would have been the other way. All right, if pressure is doubled, so increased pressure means we double the collisions. That would mean uh, you must have a decreased volume, half. When that happens, volume, so less space, half the space. And if you double the temperature, uh, so doubling the kinetic energy, which would mean that you must be increasing the volume, so double the space. So what happens is there's, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we're cutting the temperature in half. So half this would mean half the space. So our volume would be one quarter or a fourfold decrease. So one quarter of the volume or fourfold decrease. So if you have double the collisions, but half the, they're moving slower, but they're colliding more, the only way that could happen is if they're in a much smaller space. Um, all right, number 13. I love these kind of problems because I love algebra. You just need to rearrange it so you get all the ones on one side and the twos on the other side. So to move the ones, we would get P1V1 equals P2V2, and that is correct. So that is good. Um, so again, move the ones to one side. So we're going to move the T1 on this side and the T2 to this side. So the ones on one side, and that is correct. So this is all coming from that formula P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 V2 over T2. Um, so P times V or V over T. If we do this one, we just need to move the P1 down here. Right, so we would divide, and that's fine. We're just flipping this, so the T's are on top and the P's are on the bottom, so that's good. Uh, and just a quick comment sometimes there should be always an answer, and it is this one when we rearrange it, we end up with V2 over P2 equals V1 over P1, and that's wrong. It has to be P times V. So pressure and volume are always inversely related. Um, so if you can put all the ones on one side and the twos on the other side, you can figure it out. 
All right, number another 13. Look at this. I love Bill Gates. He made all my questions 13. So I'm not going to walk through these, but I'm going to walk through how we would do it. We have eight grams, a couple of things to remind you of. The answers are there. Uh, eight grams of nitrogen. So remember diatomics. So nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine. All right, and the 6.00 cubic meters. So that's our volume, right? Um, if we're going to use R, we would have to go to liters. So just a reminder, again, decimeters cubed equals liters. But before you change it, let's see if we have to. Um, and so it's asking for a new volume. So we can just keep it in cubic meters, and I did, so we're not going to make any change. And it tells us we have this many molecules of ammonia. Now, if you don't know ammonia, you can always Google it in this environment, but we don't actually need to know ammonia because we're not going to go to grams. We're just going to change our molecules to moles. And no matter what it is, if it's CO2, if it's, if it's water vapor, you're going to divide by Avogadro's number. That will give you your number of moles for two, your moles for your nitrogen, uh, using the periodic table, that will give you your moles one. Let's get rid of that. And so we're going to use moles in volume. So back to this formula that I sketched, moles show up with the temperature. So this is coming from PV equals NRT. We're just setting everything equal to R. So P times V over NT. The, vol the pressure and the temperature are constant. So V1 over N1 equals V2 over N2. We don't need a chemical equation. There's no reaction going on. It's just saying that they have the same temperature and pressure. So there must be a connection. Any gas um, at that temperature and pressure, if this is the volume, this ratio would hold true. So you would plug in and solve for V2. All right, uh, the next one. On the worksheet, I have you write out chemical equations because it's a worksheet. On the test, I give you, like on this one, the chemical equation. Uh, this is that we have 15 grams of argon, 15 grams of methane, and we have four liters. 5.27, so our volume, ATMs. The key to all of this, if you haven't guessed what gas laws, gas laws are your friend, it's the units. It's just all in the units. Uh, 54 degrees Celsius equals our temperature, so we just have to change this to Kelvin. So it is PV equals NRT, because we don't have two of anything. And it doesn't say, hey, what's the density or, hey, what's the molar mass? So just do PV equals NRT. Um, actually, on the worksheet today, every single one of them, I just use PV equals NRT. So it just wants the pressure of the argon. That means we can ignore the CH4. So this we would just change to moles and we plug in. Now, if it had asked for total pressure, you cannot add masses together. If it had asked for pressure total, you have to find each one's individual moles, and then you could add the moles together. Um, but it was just I gave you extra information. You didn't need the CH4 at all. Um, so you would just plug in, change to moles, PV equals NRT, and you got it. Um, all right, the last one, it wants, oh, this is a good one. Um, yeah, I'm not going to walk through the whole thing, but you're going to do PV equals NRT uh, with the first set of information, which is for the H2S. And you'll solve for moles of H2S. And then you'll go 
right? Your two moles of H2S. We want to solve for water to two moles of water. And then you go your moles to grams. That will give you grams of water. But there's more information. You do the PV equals NRT then for the oxygen. What type of problem is this? Oops, sorry, I lost the N. You solve for your moles of oxygen. And a limiting reactant. It is a limiting reactant, and then you pick the smaller. So the last question on the worksheet is like this. Um, so you have to solve twice. The differences on the worksheet, uh, one of them I give you grams. So you just go grams. You, you're solving for pressure. And the key with gas laws is the mass doesn't matter. So you actually only go as far as moles. And then you can plug back into PV equals NRT. Um, so like last term, we did everything with solids and stuff. We did everything always to grams. With gas laws, it's moles that you want. But um, so PV equals NRT gets you to moles. And so there's no need to go back to grams. You just keep moving forward. So you go right into the mole to mole and solve for grams of water both times and pick the smaller one. Um, any questions? So the test is probably about half math and half some of the theory stuff. Uh, and again, you'll get three hours. You should not need three hours. You really should all be done in two and a half hours. You should be done by the time the sun sets. Um, I will be on Zoom. I'll be here at five o'clock on Tuesday. So if you have questions, I'm not doing an office hour Saturday, but you can check. We all need a break from Zoom. Um, and you kind of get a break again on Tuesday from Zoom. You only have to check in when you turn it in. And I'm going to stop recording unless there is a question.